Hey guys, this is Max and welcome to our very first extensive film review. The film company Berger recently released its Punkro 400 as a medium format film. And the official company website states that this film is a real high-tech premium film featuring two different emulsions consisting of silver bromide and silver iodide. And that, at least according to the website, it looks great with every developer. And that statement alone, of course, was reason enough for my friend Jules and myself to order a couple of rolls and uh, test them extensively in a couple of different developers. So what this review video will feature is development in Rodinal and Kodak uh, D76 and in our favorite developer, which is Spur Acrol N. And of course, we also wanted to test the film in all sorts of different locations. So this film really covers um, some mountain ranges in Croatia, a gravel pit close to Munich, uh, two different portrait sessions, one indoors, the other one outdoors. And last but not least, even a photo walk that we did in Regensburg. Um, so we where we drove all the way out there with two different cameras and shot a couple of um, images on Berger Pankro. And what is also important is that we wanted to cover in this review not only how this film looks as an unedited scan and then as an edited scan, but that we also wanted to do some prints of the negatives and to show you these as well so that you really get an idea of how this film looks and feels with also different developers when you put them put the negatives into the enlarger and to actual prints. So without further ado, let's take a look at what we did first and that was uh, do a little photo walk with the Hasselblad 501 CM that Jules owns with a 50 millimeter card size Distagon lens and um, with Pancro 400 rated at ISO 400 and then developed in um, Rodinal. So let's take a look at some of the impressions on site. So as you can see here, the development in Rodinal brought out quite some grain on this particular film. And uh, I later learned that the two different emulsions even bring about different grain sizes, so that is interesting. And um, overall, you, uh, as is kind of typical for, for Rodinal, you get a rather grainy and if you want hard contrast look uh, that many street photographers, as you know, prefer. And that's also one of the reasons why Rodinal is so popular, um, because of the kinds of contrasts and um, uh, hard grainy uh, 
kind of classic look that you can create through that developer. And of course, it's also very simple in its handling. Uh, so it's also easy for starters, this particular developer. I also used the very same developer, Rodinal, um, for a film that I shot during a portrait session that I did together with one of my friends um, who's playing the cello. So this was an indoor portrait session that I shot actually completely on Kodak Tri-X, but I also brought along one roll of Berger Punk 400 to just give it a try and I wanted to do a roll of best off shots, so to speak, that I wanted then to self-develop in Rodinal. And that's what I did and here you get a couple of impressions of how this worked out. This set was shot with a Mamiya RZ67 um, with a 110mm Secker lens. Again, as you can see here from the scans, that brought out quite some grain, but nevertheless, I really like the look that I could create, especially indoors with this film, um, with usually shutter speeds ranging from around 130s to 160s of a second, and with an aperture, of course, wide open of 2.8 on this particular lens. We also tested the film with another common developer, which is Kodak D76. And here I used, I shot one roll of it um, during a casual portrait session with my friend Zoe that I did um, with the Mamiya 645 Pro TL. So I got 15 shots from that roll and I really, really like how this turned out. Um, if you look at the results here, you can see this a really soft glow of her skin and um, really nice uh, dark areas. If you want to, you can really bring out some uh, interesting gray areas. So the overall latitude of this film is, is really interesting. And in general, you can say that the uh, characteristic is rather flat. So um, you have a great foundation for scans and also for, for prints um, in this film because you get really uh, nice, fine, fine-tuned gray scales if you want to. And in this particular case we decided to take this portrait and also um, do a print of it. And what I found interesting is that the result of our split grade development um, for this print is very similar to what I had come up with much earlier in Lightroom. Um, and again, I, at least in my opinion, we have the same softness and this kind of glowy feeling of the skin here. Unfortunately, this particular image is a little bit out of focus, so the focus is not spot on on her eyes, but uh, on her hair in this case. Um, but nevertheless, I really like the image. My friend Jules also brought along the film and his Hasselblad 501CM to a little trip to Croatia that he did together with a friend. And here you can see um, basically his friend from behind during a mountain hike. And uh, this image is interesting um, because also of the kind of um, dynamic range that we have in this image. So we have the black of her backpack, we have a little darker areas here on the lower left corner in the foreground. And of course you have the sky with, an, with a much lighter area. And that of course was also a great um, opportunity um, to test, uh, to do a split grade on it, on this particular negative, and uh, take a print of this image. And here you can see the result and the comparison of the original scan, then the edited scan, and also how the scanned print looked like. And here, in addition to that, we, sh we show you some scenes of how the negative actually looks like and how the print actually looks like, as much as we can convey that using a film camera. The development in Kodak D76 um, brought about much finer grain than with Rodinal, um, which is also not uncommon. And here you can really feel that this is a, a, a great compromise and in terms of the kind of sharpness that you get, the kind of fine grain that you get. Um, this is really a good idea um, using Kodak D76 as indicated basically on the box of um, Berger Pankro. This worked really well and I would recommend using that developer if you just want to have typical um, results and you want to shoot the film at box speed at ISO 400. 
We then finally did another test because we were kind of pleased with the results that we got so far from Pankro and decided to test it extensively and also test it with one of our favorite developers and that is Spur Akarol N. What is important about Spur Akarol N is that you usually, in order to get typical contrast, um, you add an extra spot, uh, extra stop of light. Um, so even with, when you shoot Kodak Tri-X, you usually rate it at ISO 200. Uh, in order to get normal contrast negatives um, from a typical normal development with Spur Acarol. So we did the same here. We rated our Pankroid ISO 200 and we used two different cameras for a little photo walk in Regensburg. Um, Jules used my uh, Yashica Mat 124G um, shooting 6x6 medium format and uh, rated it at ISO 200 and then did a stand development afterwards with a delusion of 1 to 200. And I was allowed to shoot his uh, Fuji GS645 and uh, also rated it at ISO 200 and um, developed it with a delusion of 1 to 50 for 13 to 14 minutes afterwards. And that was interesting because we didn't have any official uh, data from Spur Akarol N for Berger Pankro at that point. So we spent quite some time figuring out um, what would be the appropriate um, amount of development time for this particular film. And based on the experience that we had with Spur Akarol with other films in a, in a similar um, area, we just decided to go for 13 to 14 minutes and the negatives turned out perfect. So we were kind of lucky here and did just an educated guess and listened to our gut feeling basically. And we really liked uh, how the results uh, looked like and we replicated it ever since then. then and uh, yeah, I would just recommend you give it a try as well if you want to. So here you can see us develop the films that we shot in Regensburg. In this case, Jules took care of it. Um, here, filling in the stop bath. In this case, we used a Yogo tank, by the way. And here comes the most important part, um, kind of getting the negatives out of the tank and uh, taking a look at them for the very first time. This always gets me so excited and here we can already see there was one kind of underexposed um, shot in there and we will just take a look at how they were created in Regensburg.
So that's it from our little photo walk in Regensburg. And afterwards, as you could see earlier, we went back and started developing the film. And interestingly, as we had hoped for, um, um, because that's the primary reason for using Spur-Alcohol N, that this, the results usually um, work great for putting them inside a, an enlarger and doing a print of that negative. And so we did the same with some of the images that we um, shot uh, there. Um, I should mention here that we did another photo walk afterwards um, with Jules Hasselblad 501 CM. Um, so 6x6 six six medium format with the Distacon 50 millimeter lens. And um, here you can see a print of one of the images that I took there. Um, that is also interesting because of the darker areas here in the foreground in the lower left corner and then this kind of whitish um, um, kind of yeah sign in the middle or towards the center of the image or that draws your attention and then of course uh, some piece of sky on the upper right corner of the image and that was interesting of course for a split grade to kind of see okay how can we get the sky in a beautiful fashion without blowing out and how can we get the foreground to still retain some shadow detail and still also get some real blacks in, into the, um, the print. And here you can see again a comparison of how the original TIFF looks like, just a scanned negative, then the edited negative and then also the split grade print that we did. And um, yeah, this, as we had hoped for, Spur-Akorol N was really well suited for, for this kind of workflow and for actually taking prints off um, Pankro. And also this um, developer brought about the sharpest results, uh, least grain um, in many ways, or very similar to um, Kodak D76, so these can be compared to some extent. But if you also are interested in shooting ISO 400 films rated at 200, um, then you should definitely take a look at this particular developer. So our overall summary from this extensive review was that Berger Pankro is an amazing and very interesting film. It does have a, a rather flat characteristic, which makes it well suited for um, scanning and um, also doing prints of the negatives. Um, I, I have to say that most of the time when editing in Lightroom it was mostly about increasing the brightness and adding a little bit of contrast so this was not really kind of working hard on getting the kind of uh, dynamic range that you sometimes want an image to get kind of hard contrast and things like that so it was really easy to edit it and it felt the same when doing the split grades that was also interesting um, to see how, how easy that was and how, how quick we often could get results that um, suited our taste and what we had intended to do. Um, yeah, so th this is a film that I can highly recommend. I um, really appreciate its its kind of glowy look for um, of skin tones um, and skin in general um, for uh, black and white portraits. I really think this gives it a certain modern and at the same time very classic look. Um, and I will definitely use this film again and again, and especially using it uh, with a Kodak D76, or um, if I'm shooting it at um, ISO 200 with Spur Akarol N. So this is a film that I will definitely order some more of, um, that I really enjoy shooting. So um, I hope you enjoyed our rather extensive film review. Um, if you did, please um, like this video and maybe share it even with your friends. If you want to see more videos like that, please subscribe to our channel. And as always, we really appreciate your comments in the comments section below. So um, leave us your thoughts and um, tell us um, how to improve what we could do better on this channel. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.